The year is 1789, and we are in France. Social, economic, and political tensions are running high. The French king, Louis XVI, and his country are heading towards a revolution, a complete overthrow and change in government. Louis's position as monarch or king is threatened as the people of France demand power over their weak leader. Over the next five years, France will undergo a series of dramatic changes. Extreme movements from within the country and from foreign forces outside of France will nearly destroy the nation as a whole. From this conflict, a single leader will emerge the victor, Napoleon Bonaparte, to challenge power across the continent of Europe. Let's examine the rise and fall of the French Revolution. The French Revolution began in the late 1870s after years of economic problems plagued France. The country spent a great amount of money and went into debt after fighting the British in the Seven Years' War and after supporting the colonists in the American Revolution. Years of excessive spending by King Louis and Queen Marie Antoinette at the expensive Palace of Versailles only made financial matters worse. The king and queen were very disliked by their subjects and as a result were openly made fun of by newspapers and press of the time. The monarchy was clearly out of touch with the people. As French debt increased, social problems began to rise as major food shortages hit the people of France. A harsh winter affected local crops and many people starved as a result. Bread lines formed as many struggled to feed themselves and their families. The country was on the verge of collapse as it struggled to modernize. France continued to operate under an old political system known as the Estates General. This body met with the king to raise taxes. Here, power was split between three estates or groups. The first estate was made of clergy members, leaders of the Catholic Church. The second estate was made of wealthy nobles. And the third estate was made up of everyone else, 95% of the French population. Now, what's the problem with this? The third estate, which represented the true people of France, had no voting power at the Estates General. The powerful and rich in society held the most power in France. When King Louis was forced to meet with the Estates General in 1789 to raise taxes to pay off his massive debts, the third estate was purposefully locked out of the meeting room at Versailles by members of the first and second estate. The frustrated Third Estate members then met at a nearby tennis court and took an oath to create a new government and constitution, finally giving the people of France power over their king. Louis was now in trouble. As the revolutionaries of the Third Estate, now calling themselves the National Assembly, gained more power over the king, Louis became more nervous and called for troops to be put in Paris. On July 14th, the people of the city stormed the Bastille, a prison that had held gunpowder and weapons to fight against the king's men. The people of Paris brutally killed the king's military governor and tore down the Bastille piece by piece. This marked the first accepted use of violence in the revolution, a dark theme that would only continue. Louis's days as king were now numbered. By the summer of 1789, the National Assembly, the collective voice of the French people, wrote a Bill of Rights called the Declaration of the Rights of Man and Citizen. This key piece of constitution gave enlightened rights to Frenchmen, such as freedom of speech, free press, equality under the law, and the abolition of enslavement in the French colonies. This progressive document gave power to the individual man in France, taking even more power away from the king. The revolution was now in full swing. By October of 1789, a mob of armed women and men forced the royal family to move to the center of Paris as Louis attempted to resist the power of the people and the National Assembly. The French newspapers became more radical from 1789 through 1793, and an extreme political group known as the Jacobins rose to power with a lawyer named Maximilien Robespierre at its lead. Robespierre wanted to completely overthrow the king and establish his own version of government. As Louis's power as king and the life of his family were increasingly put under threat, the royal family made the choice to flee the country in June of 1791, hoping to make it to the monarch-friendly border of Austria. On the fateful night of June 20th, the royal family was stopped by revolutionary guards only a handful of miles away from the border. They were ultimately arrested for treason, the crime of betraying one's country. Louis abandoned his people, as Robespierre declared, the king stood trial, and ultimately, he was found guilty of treason. 
Louis was executed in January 1793 by the swift moving and razor sharp execution tool known as the guillotine. With the king dead, Robespierre led the next government. This ended up being an oligarchy of abuse of power in which power was held in the hands of only a few. The Committee of Public Safety, as it was called, took control of France, attempting to search for, quote, anti-revolutionaries who were sympathetic to the now dead king. Freedom of speech was abolished. Anyone deemed an anti-revolutionary could be executed by the guillotine. Soon, this Committee of Safety was headed by Robespierre and began to execute nearly anyone for almost any crime. One could be executed for not being enthusiastic enough about the price of bread. More than 17,000 were executed between 1793 and 1794 in what was deemed the reign of terror. How could this form of government be any better than having Louis as a king? Within a year, influential Jacobins that enforced the reign of terror began to fall. Jean-Paul Marat, a sensational radical newspaper writer, was murdered in his bathtub by Charlotte Corday for expressing radical and violent ideas. Robespierre began turning against his own inner circle, executing his right-hand man, George Danton. Almost as fast as it rose, the reign of terror eventually collapsed upon itself. By July 1794, the Committee of Public Safety turned against its own figurehead and leader, Robespierre. By the end of the month, he was executed by the same device he subjected thousands of others to, the guillotine. With the fall of the reign of terror came an end to the French Revolution. In its wake, a young military general, Napoleon Bonaparte, would rise to power and fame fighting anti-revolutionary forces on the European continent. The story of Napoleon, however, is a history so immense it deserves its own separate and detailed tale.